Dixie Road and Stardom are on a direction. And they are looking to market to female fans just like the glory days of All Japan Women and going even further back. And it was probably the best women's match um, anywhere in the world. And he, so long, it's not even, you know, I mean, decades probably. Okay, and welcome to Wrestling and... Today, we are talking about wrestling and stardom. Yes, you've all been waiting for it. Uh, Guys, if you don't know stardom, it's a Japanese women's wrestling promotion, right? Pretty simple, but another word that we use for Japanese women's promotions is joshi. So stardom is a joshi, joshi company. Um, Another one is like Tokyo Joshi Pro, and they've become a lot more popular in recent years, probably because the quality is just really good, and they have a lot of good stars and good wrestlers um a lot of people are talking about it now and uh definitely internationally which is really cool so the thing about stardom though is it's not really the most beginner friendly promotion it's not as bad as like dragon gate but it's not as easy as new japan or the american promotions it's filled with units stables groups whatever you want to call them and that can be kind of confusing for new viewers who don't really understand what the hell's going on so i'm here to help um over the past 10 years stardom has developed a history and has become kind of a staple for high quality women's wrestling uh currently so i'm i'm disclaimer i'm not a stardom expert but i've been watching for about four or five years try to catch all the big shows and i have some friends in the discord chat uh so shout outs to Brock with the Discord voice check. He, he's helped educate me over the last few years. Done a lot of research too. Now, um, Justin is my co-host and he's new to stardom, kind of. He's seen some of it. And so Justin is going to be more like you guys, the listeners. I'm the guinea pig, the student The here. guinea pig, and he's learning the new stuff. So before we talk about stardom though, uh, what, what did you go see the Kings recently? Kings have been on the road for actually had their uh, best road trip in, almost in their history. Damn. Four zero and two uh, on the East Coast. They're not going to be back here until well. There's the All Star break and Olympic break, which they're not going to the Olympics. But um, February sixteenth is the next game. So NHL players don't go to the Olympics. Well, they they, they were going to go this year, but they decided not to because of you know the COVID. Wait a second. Going to China wasn't a good idea. But but the Olympics are going on, and there are Americans in the Olympics, right? Yes. That's just but hockey. the NHL decided not to send their players, yes. There's a lot of political shit going on there, too. We don't have even close time to get into, but I know that... Yeah, uh, no, 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 no okay. not, not here. Not here, not here. There's just some anyways, countries that aren't really doing... But, uh, so, okay. Well, that's pretty awesome. What? Uh, l- moving on to the main subject, the meat, if you will of the podcast here what what do you know about stardom um hey let me plug our stuff real quick oh gotta say where they called he told me to do this and i totally skipped it in the notes so yeah (laughs) sometimes we do it at the end sometimes i don't but but, uh you can find me at in ring art on twitter and instagram instagram is probably the more popular one um where i do my drawings and links to all my stuff including i added a a little t-shirt shop to tea republic with some pretty cool stuff um and then uh we are on instagram at wrestling and podcast awesome well. so awesome. follow us interact with us we want to uh you guys to start we know we have some listeners now but we haven't heard from you so um it's time for you to speak up people have or liked stop doing this people have like i'll be like does anyone listen and then people like it but uh okay. it's kind right. of don't actually hit me up but but that's okay and and it'll grow of course too what i want is impassioned fans to tell us what we said wrong i would love that because i i like to be sure. corrected you know teach me help me but uh <laughs> yeah in ring art at in ring art on uh twitter and instagram and definitely check him out on instagram you can see some awesome pictures that he does very unique style Kind of like, but the sad thing is, oh, Justin does like, I guess what you call like an amateurish style that's kind of funny, but yes. like he's actually getting good. So, like, he's got to contemplate that. You'll have to purposely make it more amateurish as you go on. So, uh, um, I'm just, tr- I'm trying as hard as I can every time, and it always looks, it's, it, people might not think that, so, but I actually am trying to draw it things. Um, accurately and he's like i'm trying my best guys no you're doing great (laughs) man um my i'm john ensman 
at John Ensman. Um, I am a living meme. I'm the New Japan rap guy. Uh, and I'm just at John right. Ensman on Twitter. We also run the uh, at Wrestling and Pod on Twitter. And that's where we post our episodes. We're everywhere. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. We're on Amazon. I don't know anyone who listens to podcasts on but Amazon. You, but you already know that because you're listening right now. So yes, matter. yes, you, you yes. And we and we have that RSS too. So thank you for listening, guys. I really appreciate that. So, so what do I know about Stardom? Is that what you're asking, right? That is what I did <laughs> ask. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I know that it is a uh, women's professional wrestling um, a, a company in Japan. Um, Joshi, I otherwise. First, yes. How I first heard of it, um, just from just, uh, you know, casual mentions in, you know, on social media and maybe a few GIFs here and there or GIFs, whatever you call it. And also... Maybe through having Fire Pro and having that be one of the uh, oh, the, they added that to Fire Pro, huh? They have a whole yeah. There's a yeah. There's a whole Stardom download thing that you needed to get all the downloadable parts, and they have all the titles for Stardom and stuff. So awesome um, that um, and just kind of hearing it like you know when I would go to the bar wrestling and stuff, and like people. Uh, like Chris Wolf would compete at bar wrestling. And apparently, she was in stardom at some point. Uh, unfortunately, had to retire a few years ago, I think, because of injuries or whatever. But um, just kind of hearing how people have gone through stardom, like uh, you know, uh, uh, Will Osprey's ex or whatever her name is. I can't remember. B Priestley, or otherwise known as Priestley, Blair Davenport, Tony Storm, right? Right, Tony Storm. I knew I knew that there were some guys in that have just had kind of had that. On the resume, um, uh, Kyrie Sane, um, mm-hmm. Yo Oscar was it was Oscar in there at some point? I think she's competed there, but not really right. a stardom wrestler, what you would call. Right. So just kind of it was, you know, yeah. I never honestly thought about diving into it. I know they until you know they started basically when you heard that like Bushi Road bought them, but that's probably been a while now. So um, yeah. And obviously drawn to it because of the quality. And I did watch the match that you sent me actually a few times so I could piece it together. And I watched it full in one sitting. And I really, really enjoyed it. Even the commentary I thought was pretty good. Yeah, they, they, um, they, and they're doing honest. they're doing English now. So just like New Japan, they are trying to get kind of a Western expansion. as At least the best you can do under COVID. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that match I sent him was Saya Kamatani versus Tom Nakano. That was the uh, white belt uh, for the white belt. So I thought that was a good kind of intro match. I, I, I just, I, it's kind of high speed. And uh, both of them are kind of cool wrestlers too. They have kind of a cool thing going on with the tall Kamatani in the green. And then Tom Nakano is very short, very athletic, very agile. So um, that's why I sent you that one. So... Um, yeah, and you probably know the same as a lot of people. Like, you hear about it, you see the gifts online, you start learning the names of some of the wrestlers, you hear the name Mayu Iwatani, stuff like that. I mean, you probably heard that name, right? I think she performed yeah. it all in. Also. Right, and you also hear, you know, Starlight Kid, you hear Hana, Julia. obviously Hana. Yeah, yeah. Um, which we'll get to. Um, so, Julia, yeah. So, they're really breaking into the kind of like online wrestling community um in america at least um and stardom really is kind of broken in more than a lot of the other joshi promotions although to be fair tokyo joshi pro maki ito right i mean though they are kind of have a little bit of a foothold you've probably heard about that stuff too right I gotta say, not really. But it probably is Maki a Ito, familiar, though. Really. Maki Ito. I've heard the name. Yes, I have. Okay, she's like the not... the schoolgirl that flips people off and says "fuck," and she was on AEW. So, but yeah. So yes, I've heard of her. She's kind of a comedy. Kind of, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, definitely cool to see Joshi getting more popular. So let's uh, let's go. We can't really talk about Stardom, Justin, without first starting. Uh, many years ago, and that is with uh, 
Rossi Ogawa. You, have you ever heard that name? Because that's going to be a name to memorize here uh, for everyone. Rossi Ogawa. You, you know that? There will be a quiz later. And there will I'm be no quiz. But... Feverish notes. Rossi <laughs> Ogawa. Mm-hmm. No. Never heard of him. Okay. and my wife don't know who that is. Yeah, well, I mean, so Rossi Ogawa who kind of runs stardom now, and he might book it, but I'm not sure exactly on that, so correct me if not, but Ogawa worked for All Japan, AJW, like All Japan's women's, um, with which had no relation with All Japan Pro Wrestling. It's just called that, All Japan's Women. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Sure. And All Japan's Women was extremely popular. Um, right. Especially in the 80s and 90s, and in the 80s, we're talking breaking into mainstream kind of popularity with like the crush That's where, girls. Where we're always seeing the Bull Nakano and uh, mm-hmm. uh, why is the name slipping my mind? Um, well, there's Aja Kong. There's a there's uh, Aja a, Kong. Yeah, all those kind of matches. You ever whenever you see those just flat out crazy, uh, you know, insane matches from the eighties and nineties. That is all Japan women. All Japan women, yeah. And okay. Ogawa actually started in the company as like a photographer in mm-hmm. All Japan's women back in the day. And then he, he made his way up, um, did public relations executive. He was an on he did some on screen stuff. Um wow. so and he he actually worked with them until nineteen ninety seven. So he had a lot to do with all Japan's women's and you know, if you guys it's kind of similar to uh, Jim Cornette and Paul Heyman, who started as photographers. Yeah, yeah. In that sense, yeah, they both were there. They loved wrestling. They wanted to be part of the action. They talked to somebody. You know, next thing you know, they're doing a little more. And so, Rossi Ogawa. Um, now, and again, this All Japan's Women stuff. We're not going to talk much about it, but I mean, I would I urge you guys to go check out the history of that because I mean, we're talking like. Many five star matches from the '90s here, from Meltzer, of course. Um, a lot of highly acclaimed matches with names like uh, Akira Hokuto, Aja Kong, Bull Nakano, Minami Toyota, Dump Matsumoto. These are like very famous uh, Joshi names uh, from that era. But the point is Rossi Ogawa. So in 2010, Ogawa approached a wrestler and idol named Fuka. And basically talked to her about starting a new promotion. Um, and the, the idea was to get this someone Fuko was training named uh, Yuzuki Aikawa. Kind of like Aikawa, kind of like a stardom, I guess you'd call her like a stardom legend. Although 10 years ago a legend, that's more like re- WWE. They call anyone a legend that's wrestled more than five years, right? Uh, I mean... Or just someone that was on their roster that shows up five years later as a legend, like yeah. Molina or, you know, those kind of people. Yeah, Michelle McCool is a legend. Michelle McCool. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're, they're legends. Um, so, Aikawa, they wanted to push her as the top star. So, again, Fuki was training Aikawa, and Rossi Ogawa, Rossi Ogawa came to them and, like, let's start a new promotion. And pretty much they just hired a bunch of people after that, and it was born. Now, it's not actually called Stardom. The real name of the company is kind of dumb. It's called World Wonder Ring Stardom. But we all just call it Stardom, you know? No one has time to call it WWRS or anything like that. So, yeah, uh, it started back then with Rossi Ogawa. So we have some kind of... We have a lot of kind of... a, a connection from the past into stardom. So you, you see what I'm saying? There is, it's, yeah. it's, it's not just started out of the blue. It, it, it had definitely, there's a line that goes from AJW to stardom. And, uh, you know, being that it's been successful now and AJW was so successful, it's kind of like, it's, it's kind of cool that that line kept going. And we'll talk more about that later, but, um, and don't worry, we're not guys. We're not going over the full history year by year. This is just the beginning. We're going to talk about the beginning first, and then we'll move to some other subjects. So, um, their first event ever was in 2011, and it was called Birth of Nova at Shinkiba First Ring. Uh, do you know anything about First Ring, Shinkiba First Ring? Do not. Okay, it's, Shinkiba First Ring is like a a 
warehouse turned into in the like warehouse district okay that had has been turned into a wrestling kind of venue it's it's like hmm. smaller than Karakuen hall right probably only yeah. holds a few hundred people and so new japan's not going to run there because they don't they're not going to sell just a hundred tickets right but it's been really good for like smaller you're like i see you going like oh maybe and uh, nowadays now, right they could do it yeah yeah they're like shit we had a full sellout 150 it's about what they're putting in cork and all right now yeah yeah for sure um so that yeah they started at shinkiba first ring which actually kind of become like a staple for stardom's performances a lot of first ring performances there um and as through that year they finally had their first show at what place did you just mention uh, cork and hall cork and hall they finally had their first show at cork and hall and something happened on this show that went completely viral. Now, when you think mm-hmm. of Joshi wrestling, girl wrestling, and viral video that even went popular in America, does anything come to mind at all? I'll remind you, and then I you'll remember. a w- wardrobe malfunction? Not a wardrobe malfunction, although that would be cool. Um, no, they, this, this show, their first show at Korakuen Hall, was when... Haruka wrestled Kenny Omega. Okay, so that was the eight or nine year old kid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you that, know the rumor is is that 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 was um what's her name? Uh, it's Haruka. What do you mean? It's a rumor. It's someone else. It is who it is. It, the the rumor was it like people were always claiming that it was uh what's her name that she was the first AEW Women's Champion. Um, why is oh, me? oh, Riho. Yeah, that's not Riho. Riho. Yeah, yeah, Riho. two different people. Right. Well, yeah, obviously. That's but weird. I'm saying a lot of people. Why are like, oh, even... that was Riho. I think there's some like subtle racism in that. Like it's Riho. It's like, bro, they don't even look the same. But okay. Uh, anyway, I yeah. think a lot of that was. I I I mean, there was kind of uh, the impression that Kenny Omega was heavily involved in the construction of the that initial women's roster for AEW. Yeah, but he would uh, I uh, look, it's like can, well, you and you probably realize that that's not Riho. I mean, uh, uh Oh yeah, yeah, I I know, but well, I'm just saying like first of all, a lot of people really never saw sat there and watched the entire match. Maybe you saw like a, a few of the uh, you know, gifs the or just yeah, the clips of it so like it probably wasn't enough to determine like what exactly the girl looked like and maybe you're like oh that's Riho oh really okay then I'll yeah, watch that's another a Japanese girl so now talk. now Kenny yeah. Omega took her under her wing and but I, I think a lot of it was just because the age kind of matched up because you know that girl is probably about the age of Riho now probably or something like that I don't know whatever I'm just saying that was always rumor that was the rumor on on the internet and you know the internet's never wrong yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think Har- Haruko even wrestles anymore. But I, I would love to tell uh, Riho that. Hey, Riho, are you Haruko? She'd be like, No, that's I'm Riho. That's hot. Ha- that's Haruka. <laughs> Haruka. Sorry. So very viral moment from Stardom. But the funny thing is, Stardom really never had anything to do with that online, right? Like everyone posted, wrestler wrestles child. You know what I mean? Right. But didn't really say where it's from or anything. I, I don't think I knew that was Kenny Omega when I first saw it. I, I don't think I did. Did you? Yeah, because by that time I was into wrestling, I knew who Kenny Omega was. So, yeah, I knew it was Kenny Omega. It was, I mean, the two viral things that I think of from Japan like that were, was, uh, you know, Kenny with her and then uh, Ibushi wrestling with the, Yoshihiko. Uh, the, the, doll. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. but that that was DDT, right? That was DDT, but Kenny Omega did wrestle for uh, DDT, DDT well. at okay. the time. Um, so, but not, but I guess technically you said he wrestled for Stardom. He wrestled. He got paid by Stardom. You know, okay. he was signed with DDT, but did that with Haruka. So, uh, pretty cool. And Yoshihiko is the doll. For uh, Yoshihiko killed it. You know what? Other people have had great matches with Yoshihiko, by the way. Just, just to let you know, it's just that Ibushi one was pretty cool. Um, so not Yoshihiko, but Yoshiko, who's okay. a stardom wrestler. This is a different person. Yoshiko, uh, she was also on that show. And uh, Aikawa, who when I was telling you, Rossi met with Aikawa. Aikawa beat Yoshiko and became the very first 
wonder of stardom champion at that first Karakuen show. So is that is that their main belt? That's what we're gonna get to now. So okay. uh, we'll talk about these belts. There are actually a good amount of belts. It's a little bit confusing. It's not as bad as uh, maybe New Japan has. You know, although they've gotten rid of a couple, but uh, yeah. So the wonder of Stardom Championship is not their main belt. Actually, their main belt, and th- there's there's ways to remember this stuff. By the way, guys, easy ways. Their main belt is the World of Stardom Championship. Now, most okay. fans just call it the Red Belt. Okay. Okay. It's the Red Belt. You know, it's easy. Sure. Little trivia here. Um, in AJW, here's that line we're talking from the past to the to the present. In AJW, their top belt was also a red belt, the WWWA okay. championship. So the red color has that meaning. Red is like the top champion. Um, that is their main event belt, singles belt, right? It's red. Um, although in 10 years now, only 14 women have held the belt. So very respected belt. You know what I mean? Long Ten years, fourteen women. Okay, that's how many people have held the WWE title in the last six months. Exactly. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so long reigns, um, for the most part. Um, first champion Not ever. Roman though. What about Roman? No Roman reigns. No, no, no okay. Roman. Re- so the first champion for the red belt was Nanai Takahashi, and she was like an AJW wrestler um, and a Stardom original. So another, another that gap kind of bringing one to the other. And the most recent champion is Shuri. We'll get into her, right? Shuri. Right. Um, now, the first Gaijin champion was actually Tony Storm. So Tony Storm okay. was the first. But but here's the thing. This is going to trip you out. She was never supposed to win the belt, bro. Uh, okay. Mayu Iwatani legitimately dislocated her shoulder during their match. Wow. Okay. That sucks, huh? So they had no choice but to make yeah. a, you know, make a different call in the ring, call an audible, if you will. Just imagine if during that G one final that it was Okada the one that busted his arm instead of Ibushi. <laughs> you know, jeez. I mean, sometimes a guy will go through like, you know, think of uh, with Austin and, and Owen Hart where they still did they didn't change the result of the match. They just had to hurry it up a little bit. Uh, oh, dude, people that? do pretty crazy shit while they're injured. I mean, uh, obviously, the Takahashi neck break thing and all that shit, it's like, how did he f- won that match, right? Well, I'm just saying, like, shouldn't you? Well, did he? I don't remember now, but sometimes they don't think enough to change the result of mm. the match. They just say, you're hurt, let's just get this done, and then we'll figure it out when we get back. So for them to know that she was, like, if she hurt her shoulder, oh, it was prob- it was probably a like a bushi, bro, where she just stopped. Like right. m- immobilized, um, which right. supposedly that shoulder dislocation is extremely painful. I think that's what it happened to Ibushi, right? Same thing. Uh, yeah, I think his was a little a very serious separation. Well, okay. anyway, so Tony Storm basically won it because her opponent was injured during the match. Yeah, which which I hear a lot the first of Gaijin accidentally. The the Gaijin for the red belt, the top belt. So. Although I've heard a lot of people kind of make fun of her for that. Like, she wasn't even supposed to win it, you know. But uh, well, it happened. She did. she did. So the longest champion ever is Io Shirai. And we'll mm. we'll talk about her more, too. Obviously, probably one of the more famous people from to come out of stardom. Um, and she actually had the title for, like, over a thousand days. And had tw- wow. 24 defenses. Pretty That's awesome incredible. run. Yeah, very, very cool. Okay, next one, and this one's even easier to remember because this is the white belt, and okay. it's called the white belt. This is the wonder of stardom. So the red belt is the world. This one is the wonder. The way I remember it is like it's the intercontinental champion exactly. from New Japan. Yeah. And so. for it to be white helps too. And even comparing it to a WWE uh, white title, intercontinental has been white at times. So. Ex- exactly. So... That's pretty easy to remember. Um, so the other thing about this belt is that it's it's pretty respected, just like the IC title was in New Japan. So this is not a, you know, 
it's not a throw off secondary title. It's probably more prestigious than like the TNT title is in in AEW. It's pretty serious. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, so I always think about the Intercontinental Title in the eighties and nineties in WWE, where that was always or WWF at the time. Yeah, that was when the, were the real secondary champion. Title. When you were the Intercontinental Champion, you were considered the number one contender for the world title. Mm, you remember okay. those days? Well, I remember Shawn Michaels against Bret Hart, champion versus champion, right? I mean... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it, it's a pretty serious belt, and um, a lot of times in stardom, like, the winner of the owner of the white belt is not worse than the owner of the red belt. They might just be different or a little younger, or it's just a different person they're trying to push. And I guess optimally, if you run a wrestling company, your belts should both all be respected, right? We And we probably talked about that, right? I mean... Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, each one should have people that actually want it. Uh, it's um, totally, yeah. totally. Where Where you had... Uh, what wrestler like just was it Naito? He just loved that white belt. Like he wanted, well, he disrespected it, no, no, right? No, no. But he used to throw that around and treat it like trash. But still, but he came synonymous he, with it in a way. Yeah, like a yeah, because even though he totally disrespected the belt, he still acknowledged the belt and brought some kind of attention to it. So I, I think that's okay because it's not like you're ignoring it, um, and just kind of you know whatever. I think. The fact that he disrespected that made it a storyline and made it um, feel like people say, no, that belt you should treat better because, you know, it, it, made yeah. it, it brought attention to it. That, that, was, a, that was a good part um, when he, when he uh, threw the white belt around. Um, so, but that, that white belt, wonder of starting champion. Again, you know, the fans, they're not sitting around usually calling it wonder or world. A little ha- hard to remember. It's the red belt is the main belt and the white belt is the other belt um so one of the uh, and and by the way just like the red belt the white belt was also the ajw secondary championship at the time okay so that was the all pacific championship so that history is still there um one of the original gimmicks was like only stardom wrestlers could challenge for the white belt but that actually changed in 2013 uh dark angel Sarah Stock, American wrestler, um, she won the she won it. So, kind of a, one of those wrestling things where it's like, oh, let's just do this, and then they're like, ah, fuck it, that doesn't really work. Um, kind of like the never open weight champion being only for young people. Did you remember? Did right. you? Yeah. So, I think they had, or I think at, at some point they had a twenty five and under belt, right? At which company? Uh, New Japan. Well, that was supposed to be the never. Okay. Open. So, I mean, you know, really their new thing is like the Young Lions thing, but, but uh, um, yes, they... they well, they, the never open weight just means that anybody from any um, weight class weight level yeah. can, can go after it. And even in between that, between those other stage, it was the beefy belt for all the... You know, yeah, with the style, the style that guys, they were putting yeah. on. But actually, it's right. funny because it actually never stood for new blood evaluation valiantly eternal. It's just some of that Jap- Japanglish, like nonsensical. Right. Um, but but yeah, so that that's the white belt. Um, the Dark Angel, Sarah Stock, she was the first Gaijin champion. And the current champion is Saya Kamatani. And it was in that match I sent you. So that was right. for the white belt. Um the longest running white belt champion ever was that person who helped start stardom, Aikawa. And she held the belt for 618 days with eight defenses. So the first champion was the longest running champion. That's a mm. record that, you know, could be beat. So, kind of cool. All right. Next on. Goddess of Stardom Champion. It's kind of a funny name, huh? Yeah, I mean, I, I, honestly, something named Goddess you think would be at the top, a little right? higher up. Yeah, yeah. You do have World, which does War- kind of always mean the top belt, unless you're talking Universal these days or whatever. Who knows? Yeah, um, Universal. I, but Goddess, I mean, it sounds pretty powerful. And you know what's funny? It's not even a singles belt. That's their tag belt. Mm. What is that? White Claw Pineapple, by the way, as yes. you're drinking that. Yes, it is. Is it yeah. good? Yeah, that's fine. 
I went I went on a date on Friday and she was like, "Give me some White Claw." I said, like, "Okay, cool." Anyways, uh, Goddess, I I am currently drinking a uh, Sam Adams Cold Snap. Why? Because every beer they sell is IPA, and I'm just didn't don't feel like that right now. Yeah, we all went through that phase. It's not even a phase. It's still it's people say it's a phase, but it's still going on. Everyone's like IPA, well, IPA. Yeah. But uh, okay. I I, I kind of liked them, but now uh, yeah, it's okay. It's just too much sometimes. A little too much. Every yeah. Once in a while. Yeah, mix it up. That's what I say. Um, so the goddess of stardom champions, we'll just we can just call those the tag belts, right? Those are the tag sure. belts. Um, so but by the way, some Should trivia. The goddesses. The goddesses. Yes. Um, goddess I, I think is the plural, but, uh, some yeah. trivia, uh, the, that the belts were actually designed by an American company, the top belts company. So kind of funny yeah. there, but, uh, current champions are Hazka, Koguma, the bear Koguma. The champions with the most days is the first winning team, B.Y. Hole, with 433 days. However, Kagetsu... Um, the wrestler Kagetsu, by herself, you know, with different teammates, has held the championship for 536 days. And the first Gaijin champions were B. Priestley and Jamie Hayter. So, interesting. Of course, you know Jamie Hayter. Everyone knows her. She's uh, did a glam She's up. Brie Baker's. Yeah, she did a uh, glam three. up, lost a bunch of weight, and, you know, she's now part of uh, AEW. So... All right, we. I did not know that. We got four more belts here. The next one is the Artist of Stardom Championship. Another funny name. I mean, we have Goddess Artist, right? The Artist. Very interesting. Just yes. from hearing the name, what would you think? The Artist. What do you think? Well, I, well, I think it's Shinsuke Nakamura because that's oh, the dumb name they gave him. I kind of like uh, it in in WWE, but I would think it would be something. Where it's somebody that's a high flyer or something like that. Yeah. No, it's just the trios titles. That's all it is. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> so notice, people, the names of the belts really are like have no meaning. They're just like Japanglish, random, you know, random words. Okay. Uh, so, so we got two singles belts. So and far, then got a trios belt and a tag belt. Okay, that makes sense. Simple, seem right? Like too much yet. Very Doesn't straightforward. Seem like too much yet. Yeah. Very straightforward. Um, I'm just wondering if they have enough people uh, in there on their roster to carry those belts but they carry they, on, carry they do even if everyone in the roster has a belt but uh so um yeah it's just a trios belt that's all i'd say these are a little more respected than the never trios belts but they're not like okay. anything crazily special you know what i mean those never trios belts have gotten uh, a little bit more respected in the last couple years well, it always depends on who has them, and you know, because well, like that's what every belt really depends. Really, true. Yeah, yeah. Anything yeah. that's not the world title, it just depends on who has it. Yeah, totally. Um, so it's a trios belt. Um, I got the history here, but I'm not going to go over it too much. Uh, Artists of Stardom Championship trios belts, and uh, the uh, last team that held them were the Cosmic. You didn't Game. tell us what color the Gardas belt was. The witch belt? The goddess belt? I think it's just black. Okay. So and is it the same with the artist belt? I don't know about the color. Um, but people only usually refer to the red and white belt as the colored belts. So... Oh, okay. So it doesn't matter after that. Yeah, I mean, they have their own color. I think some of them are pink. Yeah, okay. So the artist belts are red, pink, and blue. So each one's a different Sweet. color. Um, a cool little... That's, which is kind of cool. fun. Yeah. So, um, but... It's the artist, the, the trio's belts. Um, okay. Next is the High Speed Championship. Which okay, I've heard of that one. This is the belt you were thinking was the last one, okay? Okay. Your high flyers, your high speed. The way I think of it is it's kind of like a junior heavyweight title. Right. However, or cruiserweight, if you will. Or cruiserweight. However, all the girls in stardom are generally kind of small. There are big girls, yeah. though. But, I mean... This is just a, a high speed title, right? Uh, uh, Compare it a little bit to open the Brave Gate, although that's if, in Dragon Gate, although that's become kind of a brutal uh, title. So it's your high speed, um, your high speed, it, pretty self explanatory. Um, so it, and and actually, this belt came from a different promotion called Neo Japan, and 
Stardom bought the, or I don't know if they bought, but they acquired the rights in 2010. So, um, yeah, the current champion is Starlight Kid, who you know. So, yes, yes Starlight Kid killing it out there. Um, and then fine, no, we got two more, two more. <laughs> two more belts? Yeah, two more belts, yep. Um, Ooh, then these, these last two belts, like, don't really matter a ton, but they're kind of a pat on the back, okay? So, this next one is the SWA Championship, which I didn't even hear much about, but it, it does exist. And the way I could call this is it's kind of like their Gaijin belt, kind of like the U.S. title, right? In, um, okay. Yeah, so it's it's generally challenged by someone outside of stardom and someone in stardom. Okay. That makes sense. So, so it's kind of their inner promotional title or something like that. Yeah, I, I think of it a lot as like the U.S. belt because, you know, you have a lot of gaijin that challenge for it. And, and have it. And have it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like a, I think I saw like only a couple Japanese have had this title. So um, they don't want to call it the gaijin belt because that probably wouldn't be cool. But they, you mm-hmm. know, it is. And Tony Storm has held that for the longest for only 64 days. So it hasn't even been that round, oh, around that long and okay. thecla is the current champion when i first watched thecla told me someone she's like a better bray wyatt so and i can what? concur with that yes she is <laughs> yeah she does the whole crab thing and then walks like that across the ring Jeez, it's pretty cool and then finally we got the future of stardom champion okay y- you have to have wrestled for three years or less to challenge for this belt interesting yeah so kind of like their, their uh, you know, kind of like their Young Lion thing. And uh, Starlight Kid was the first winner of that as well. So um, there we go. Basically, guys, all those lower belts, you don't need to freak out about those. The big ones is the red belt, the white belt, the tags, high speed, right? And right. if you can remember yep. that stuff, you're good. You're ready to know, like, what match you're watching. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. yeah. There you go. Um, moving on here, one of the most confusing things is uh, stables and units. Do you know any of the stables? Or well, I guess I'll call them units. Do you know any of the units in uh, New Japan or in, in I know Stardom? There's like, I know there's four to five of them, and I've heard some of the names, but I they one's like what Queen's Gambit or something. I don't know. <laughs> close, uh, very close. <laughs> Queen's Quest. I, I've heard that. Yeah, I've I've heard the names, but I forgot them because i'm just ter- terrible with names in general it's okay um but i did hear of of queen's uh what was it queen's what queen's quest queen's quest i've heard the names of the other ones donna del mondo maybe donna del yes i've heard that i probably heard them all You've heard, um yeah hang on i'm turning and off. i know that you know they're split into of course, heel and um, baby face factions, and pretty much everyone there is in a faction. Yeah, to the point where actually they actually do like faction drafts, where they draft people into the groups. Yeah. So, um, which is pretty cool. So, the factions or the units in Stardom are re- really important, and like you said, everyone's kind of part of one. Similar to New Japan, but in New Japan. It's not as important because, I mean, dude, some people just are in their faction their whole life. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I think maybe uh, six, seven years ago, the factions were more important. Mm. But now, like, you know, chaos is, like, for example, chaos. We know who's in chaos, but there's never any type of, like, unity or anything where... You know, someone's cheating, and then all of a sudden, someone else from Chaos comes and helps. It, it that's kind of stuff doesn't happen. Yeah, and Only then the there's like the torture, really... the torture rack, or whatever they're called that yeah. broke off from the Bullet Club, and it's like <laughs> it. It only seems like the bad guys have each other's back in matches in New <laughs> Japan. Of course. Um. So, uh, a little similar though, to New Japan, and the fact that there are like four or five factions, right? But more like Dragon Gate in the sense that people do jump around and. Uh, there's a lot of kind of faction bullshit with like, oh, this guy went over here and this person joined here, and now they totally changed their persona and their gimmick. Um, right. So, um, now we're not going to go over the history because there's been way more than I even know of, 
But one faction that's not around anymore that I will mention is the Tokyo Cyber Squad. And uh, they were like a group of... How do I put it? Like, in New Japan, you have your factions. You have your 100% heel faction, right? And then you have your, like, babyface faction that has attitude, right? Like, now it's right. be, it's suzuki Goon. Nowadays, it's kind of like that people like them, but they're still, like, heels. Um, yeah, I guess LAJ would be a, a more concrete example of that. I feel like they've become... It used to be... I feel like they're just, like, straight-up babyfaces now. For the most part, yes. But I think they went through that phase. They were full-on heels you know 2016 and then they went into that tweener stage and now they're just at the other side as baby faces but yes i guess you can compare it to what currently suzuki goon is right now how did that that's crazy that that happened man that's weird that that even With happened suzuki goon? yeah <laughs> i'm thinking lance you know archer what, and just it's just, evil. It's just the, the evolution of um tai chi um, True and Zach, the fact that, and the respect that Suzuki has garnered, right? Yeah, and also just even how Doki. good Zach Saber Junior is. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure, for sure. Is it's really hard to ignore, and then Doki kind of emerging as a pretty damn good wrestler too. Yeah. So um, in Stardom, the, the you got of course every Japanese company has the heel faction, right? I feel like like that that is like every they all have it and uh, this is Oedo Tai, Oedo Tai, and that is Oedo Tai. Yeah, that is the heel faction. Um, they wear all black, of course, right? They cheat. Sure. All the girls are out there pulling each other around, and um, yeah. So Oedo yeah, why Tai. Why they cheat? They steal. Yeah, exactly, dude. So. Oedo Tai, um, you know, without getting into, like, every member, I'll talk about, like, some of the more prominent people. Um, Kagetsu, she... she uh, Kagetsu is not in stardom anymore. She retired, but she was one of the best wrestlers in stardom. Very fast, multiple crazy dives, all that stuff. And she was, like, the leader for a while, but all that's changed. Um, Konami, who you guys will hear that name, Konami... She uh, she was part of the group too, but she just had to recently take a hiatus for injury. So mm-hmm. I'd say one of the most interesting members is Starlight Kid, and you, you kind of had heard her story. Can you talk about that? What you had heard about her? Um, she got she was a just a you know a Bailey style baby face. Yeah. Um, I don't know what group she was in. But um, somehow she got, you're talking about the draft, maybe she, she got drafted into... It was actually a match stipulation. Okay, she basically got put into, uh, was it Oweotai? Yeah. Oweotai. Um, Oedo. Oedo. Oweotai. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Because uh, she, she got, as a stipulation, um, and then when it came time for her to go back to her baby face faction she completed the heel turn and now she's as evil as any of them right and even better was that uh she was one to go back to her old faction and she right, refused right. right like i said when it became time for her to go back she didn't want to yeah which which was pretty cool so um she it's easy to remember starlight kid because she's got kind of a tiger mask uh kind of look yes Right, she's one of the probably one of the few mass wrestlers in Star. I think she might be the only. Yeah, looks like she's the only one. Um, so yeah, um, the leader of uh, and that this is something, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I don't remember the leaders of all the faction. I'm sorry. I think it's a person named Natsuko Tora right now. But. Okay. But the the uh, and another kind of character you're gonna see in Oedo Tai is Gokigen Death. Have you ever seen her dressed as a clown? Yes, I have, and I saw that through uh, Fire Pro, and I thought it was the coolest look ever. She is actually forty years old too, and wow, okay. she's been wrestling for a while, so you could call her definitely a veteran because 
what people don't realize is in America, in wrestling, and even in Japan, you know, men usually are considered at their prime in their mid thirties, right? Mid to late thirties, yeah. In Japan, in wrestling for women, and probably in America too, it's more of like late twenties where women are considered in their quote unquote prime. Yeah, but you know what though? That's starting to change. It's stupid, bro, and it probably has yeah, a lot to no, do with. It's starting to change now. I mean, because look, right, you got, you know. Women like Becky Lynch and Charlotte, who are well, into, you know, mid thirties almost now. Oscar, um, Oscar is forty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and I don't really think anyone's saying, "Hey, you got to hang it up soon." So that's that's at least changing, in America. At least in America, dude. But in Japan, I still think there is a, you know, and I, I hate to say this, but I've heard that most of Stardom fans are men. That the arenas are filled with men in a lot of their shows and. Sadly, there's people that, oh, I want the good-looking girls. It's kind of this NXT 2.0 kind of mentality, like, uh, you got to be under 28. And so, but it's something you always hope can change, you know what I mean? Um, and obviously you have. I, I don't think, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Obviously, we don't watch it. Well, I mean, of course, we like to see attractive girls and whatnot, but that's not really the reason why we watch it. Um, no, that's not the reason we watch it, but... No, Stardom also but... sells bikini, you know, calendars, man. And these girls, this is one of the kind of shady parts of it is that they are kind of expected to be models as well. I mean, yeah, I think Japan is a little behind the ball in that where they're still probably um, objectifying in that way. Yeah. Um, where the girls have to do the calendar shoots and all that stuff. Where here, that's not really happening as much anymore. There's a little more uh, political correctness now. Um, Unless it's NXT 2.0. Not saying right, wrong, or any of that stuff. But yeah, but that I'm just saying the difference, you know, in the cultures right now. Um, but New Japan is probably a little more mixed. I see a lot of women out there watching New Japan matches. Um, more of a middle-aged men and women, mostly at New Japan shows. Uh, people our age, maybe older, usually, when you look in those crowds. Yeah. Not a lot of 20-something, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, like there isn't, like there is with an AEW crowd or any of the indies out here. I, I agree. And just to give you, like, kind of an idea of this, so if you go to Tokon Shop Global um, yeah. and you pick Faction and you go to Stardom... Because they sell stardom stuff there. Oh, that's right. They just started doing that. Yeah. Most of the stuff are sexy pictures. Um, yeah. Like, what am I going to do with those these days? Stardom Shuri Bikini Pro Photo. $25. They got... This is the new one. Not so $25? Can I can I just click and save, save the picture? It and it out it's signed, I think. <laughs> oh. uh, probably a fake signature. But uh, Not so Photo Book. A hundred fifty dollars, and yeah, we're talking straight up naked inside a box pictures. So, well, you know, a lot of the times I would see, you know, with Oscar and a lot of those, they had like what looked like borderline adult adult film. Oh, straight um, up like soft core, like they would they would just like straight up make films just like un- undressing. Yeah, where I don't know what those were. I never watched one, but I would see the pictures. Were those, like, videos, or were they just... Yeah, like, DVDs, like, man. Of them just kind of posing Being and stuff? sexy. Like, that's all it is? Yeah. That's so bizarre. Yeah, I, I guess you could call it, like, gravure. I don't know if it's... Let me hear I how mean, this is... you know, obviously they were very attractive in those pictures and everything, but it's like, they, they were very objectified, obviously. Yeah, you just um, hope that, like... You wouldn't see anything like that with... Becky Lynch or, uh, you know, Sasha Banks These the, here. That just is not happening. No, I mean, but you do see some of that stuff um, on Instagram with certain, like, Charlotte. She posts sexy oh, pictures all the time. Right. But but you just got to hope that these women... There's no... But there's also zero marketing, I think. Yeah, With true. at very least star- stardom. Maybe there is a little bit to New Japan where they're not marketing to eight year olds like WWE is. That's that's um, that's true, and, and or even to a degree that AEW does. I mean, look, all these action figures I have; these aren't well, obviously they're adults, but I go to buy them at Target or 
they used to be at Toys R Us. Um, I don't in the kids section an, oh, now. Exactly, they're in the they're right next to the Power Rangers or whatever. But that's the thing is I don't think there's any type of merchandising. Uh, there's no stardom action figures. Put it that way. I don't know if that's that true, but they're definitely not meant for kids. Available at toy stores. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's zero marketing to adolescents, really. There's yep. no target audience that's, uh, you know, the 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 Japan target audience to wrestling products is not what it is here. And and especially it's changed over time. Again, we talked about the '80s, Crush Girls. These were a group where like little girls in the stands would scream, "I want to be just like you" and stuff. But it's changed. Right. I mean, stardom is is more for adults in a way. A lot of men go to the shows. A lot of men line up after the shows to buy the girls' uh, merch. And uh, you know what, though, New Japan has not shied away from sexualizing um, the men, and especially DDT, which usually releases like a nude yearbook for the men. But you know, I mean, maybe it's just part of part of the Japanese thing. You just my major hope is that these girls are not forced into that, right? Yeah, that would be the you know. Hopefully, it's what it's with consent, and they don't ever feel like they have to do it to keep their keep their uh, position, position to or, keep yeah their job in general so mm-hmm. i mean i mean there's a whole culture there with workplace etiquette and pressure and i can't remember the term of it um with pressure from your boss to do stuff yeah there's a word for it power dynamic um, or something like that yeah it powered uh da, 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 something power my wife left the room of yeah course. um but yeah, I would imagine, I would hope, I would still imagine there's some kind of pressure or expectation that is on these men and women that they have to do these things against their will. Um, yeah. Hopefully there's not as much as we think it is. Hopefully. So um, another name, this is a big stardom name. This is one of the names you guys are going to want to remember along with uh, Starlight Kid, I'll say. This is Momo Watanabe. Um Momo is also recently turned in heel in a wet tie, changed her whole look. Okay, um, and she was with Queens. How recent? How recent? Like twenty twenty one. Um, like okay. we're talking. When did she switch? She had been a victim of Starlight Kid's mind games, uh, as Starlight Kid was trying to recruit more people into a wet tie. They so she had a feud with uh, Starlight Kid, and. Um, yeah, the loser. Uh, very um, soap opera. Well, very this is, Mean Girls kind of promotion. It sounds. Like. It's it's dude. It's dragging. It's very dra- clicky. It's Dragon Gate, man. Because Dragon Gate does all this title. So there's matches. Dragon Gate's gonna have matches where like the loser has to join the other faction. You know, stuff like that. Okay. And a lot of a lot of these personal feuds and. Uh, the big difference with Dragon Gate is a lot more disbanding of units and new units starting. But, um, so, yeah, they, they had basically had a feud. They both did, like, an eight-woman elimination tag match. And um, what was it? They were both the captains of their teams. And the loser captain would be for- forced to join the enemy unit, basically, type of thing. So, loser captain joins enemy unit. And, yeah, she... Uh, uh, Momo Watanabe lost and had to join a widow tie. So, um, with all this group, it's a real powerful group now. And like I, I've heard that you know they are kind of like the top group in stardom. Um, but they got a lot of talent. So, Momo Watanabe, Natsukatora, Goki Den Death, Konami, Starlight Kid. Those are the heels. A widow tie. There's more, but those are really the ones uh, ones to remember. So that's a widow tie. Um, next is stars. Stars is just basically your generic babyface faction, okay? So it's like gonna okay. be your oh, oh, what what's what's the uh, the New Japan like generic New Japan faction? What do they call it when you're uh, hantai? Hantai, yeah, that's right. it. It's just stars is your. I mean, it's stardom. Stars, right? That's it, man. Right. It's nothing crazy. They don't barely have a theme to them. It's just baby faces. Right. So. 
They just use the Stardom logo. Yeah, they well they have it says stars, but um, and they're not that big. Sounds like uh, Resident Evil, right? <laughs> yeah, except with all the periods in between there. Um, you have Mayo Iwatani, Hazuka, Koguma, Saya, Ida, and Hanan. I'm going to say that the real name to remember here is Mayu Iwatani. Um, Mayu has been wrestling for a while. You could say that she is a veteran of stardom. She is a very good wrestler. And, um, you know, they, they call stars, the they call Mayu Iwatani the icon of stardom. So in a way... You could think her of as like an ace of stardom. Not now, but she really represents the company. Kind of a face of the company type person. So okay. that that is stars with Maya Iwatami. Also, I like Koguma. The Guma in Koguma. That's the bear kanji. And she's like a bigger girl, right? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. After this is the newest faction. These are the Cosmic Angels. Cosmic Angels are baby face but incredibly cute they wear pink right so it's like the really girly girly faction um that it's hard to really find a comparison to them but they are the totally cute happy maybe you would say more like the bailey kind of like but but not so much towards kids you know which we talked about before uh more just kind of cute kind of sexy right and uh, the members here are uh, Mei Sakura, Una- They're like maybe the um, Josie and the Pussycats kind of thing, right? <laughs> Very cute, yeah. Maybe the Josie and the Pussycats. Um, uh, Unagi Sayaka, Tam Nakano, Mina Shirakawa, and Waka Tsukiyama. The name that you guys should remember here is the leader, and that's Tom Nakano. Tom was recently the white belt champion. And I'll tell you guys, when I first saw Tom, I thought she sucked. But it was one of those wrestlers who you see, and then you watch, like, years later, and you're like, whoa, 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 when did they get good? You know what I'm talking about? Like, uh, right, almost like Britt Baker, but she's better than Britt Baker. But uh, and her original gimmick was, like, she came to the ring with Asian weapons. She had fans at one point, and then she had a Naginata. Do you know what that is? The long spear with, like, a blade at the end? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, uh, Tom Nakano and uh, Cosmic Angels, all the cute girls, and a lot of recent stardom acquisitions. So, um, cool group. And then we got two more here. And these two have gotten a lot of a lot more history here. We'll go with the newer one. And this is Donna Del Mondo. Um, do you know about mm. Donna Del Mondo? Heard the name. Okay. Donna Del Mondo is, it means women of the world in Italian, even though okay. even though they're all Japanese. Someone has told me, oh, because all the girls might come from different promotions. But anyways, Donna Del Mondo is kind of like refined women, right? Like a little, they're not so cute and smiling, running around. They're more serious. They're refined. Mm. They are like elegance and more like luxurious, sophisticated. sophisticated yeah. Um, so uh, the 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 member of really, and this is Micah, Natsupoi, Julia, Shuri, and Himika. There's two people to to know from this group. The first is the current red belt champion, Shuri. Um, mm-hmm. Surely you've heard that name. I've talked about her, right, Shuri. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Shuri is awesome, bro. She used to be an MMA fighter, kickboxer, um, great violent pro wrestler. And then there's Julia. Um, what do you know about Julia besides just like a picture or is that pretty much it? Um, no, I mean, she definitely has a very unique striking look. Because uh, she's half Italian, half Japanese. Very, very right? exotic look, especially for Japan. And yes, that's right. I think she's half English. No, half Italian, half I Japanese. Italian. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, um, she seems to be like kind of. I don't know if the face of the company is the right word, but she seems to be, uh, you know, the person they want to be like the spokesperson in a way 
uh, for the company, right? She's one of the top stars for sure. I think definitely in terms of the marketing. Yeah, for sure. And sorry, she was born in England. Is uh, was my mistake oh, okay. there? But um, yeah, and there was a lot of controversy because she jumped ship to join Stardom um, from another company. From where? I, I was thinking Ice Ribbon. Um. So, Julia, uh, Ice Ribbon. Ice ribbon sounds like uh, something you get at Thirty One Flavors. <laughs> I, I know, and it sounds good too. But uh, yeah, she she jumped ship from. She actually got released from her contract, so she could work stardom, and there was a lot of stuff there. And and um, yeah, yeah, like you said, like when you see her, and if you guys have seen her, she's probably the person everyone knows. Like she does have a striking look to her. And um, she's a good wrestler who is improving. She's not the best wrestler, but she is pushed, and she is good. So um, she's in her early twenties. Yeah, as a lot of girls in Stardom are. And by the way, um, I think you know what was telling of this is that uh, when New Japan had their first kind of televised Stardom matches that were on the actual card and not dark matches, uh, Julia yeah. was in the match. So that. Yeah. Probably told the story. And Momo Watanabe. And then I, I can't remember who the two others were. They're very particular about who they choose for those matches, for those Wrestle yeah. Kingdom matches. Um, so she's 27 right now. So, um, but yeah. Oh, Julia is okay. Julia. So, and yeah, so that's Donna Del Mondo. It's easy kind of to remember because that Italian name, I think of like Italian luxury. So, cool group. And Shuri. Not the leader, but Shuri is really the killer uh, of that group right now. One of the best wrestlers in the world. Um, great wrestler. And finally, we move on to Queen's Quest. Queen's Quest kind of like was what Donna Del Mondo... They kind of had that gimmick before Donna Del Mondo. They were the more serious women's group. They now, was Donna Del Mondo a heel or a... Baby face faction. I'd, I'd say that they're a little bit tweener, but but every group is generally kind of baby face except um, Oedo Tai. Queen's Quest okay. in the past has been like a little bit in between, and Donna Del Mondo has been a little bit in between. But I mean, Shuri is part of Shuri is part of Donna Del Mondo, and people love her. But I've always had this feeling like Queen's Quest and uh, Donna Del Mondo are the more serious, more attitude-based baby faces, as opposed to stars and cosmic angels who jump around and laugh and everything's fun. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, Queen's Quest, they used to have a thing where they would all come out with masks, like hold masks up. They don't do that anymore, but that was kind of their thing. And they used to be the most dominant um, unit of uh, th and this was what this uh, this is written here. They didn't appreciate the silliness of the other factions and strive to prove their superiority in the ring. So, if that kind of yeah, um, this is Hina, Azmi, uh, Tommy Hayashista, and Saya Kamitani. And I think the two names to remember here are Saya Kamitani. This is the person mm -hmm. I sent you that match. Um, she's right. wearing green. Great wrestler. Tall girl, so much potential. Awesome Phoenix Splash finisher. Right. Wrestled at Wrestle Kingdom. I think she finished the match with that Phoenix Splash at Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, um, she did. And the whole story of that match you sent me was, can she hit the Phoenix Splash? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, and then Hai Shista, who is an incredible young wrestler, uh, many people called her Rookie of the Year a couple years ago, and uh, she was recently the Red Belt Champion. So they pushed her hard. She's great. And, uh, yeah, so Queen's Quest, Stars, Donna Del Mondo, Cosmic Angels, and Oedo Tai. Just a few things. And we're going through this kind of quick, guys, but there's so much to cover, you know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, it would take us hours to, like, talk about every uh, wrestler few uh, well i think appreciating a cliff notes approach uh people are you know because i think a lot of this i think with me especially too was um you know we've always kind of you be you get curious about something like this but then you just don't know where to start 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. And I it, think this is a very good companion piece to someone that just kind of wants to, you know, doesn't want to jump in the deep end, but wants to see how the water feels a little bit. This is perfect. This is a perfect breakdown where you could start Googling names as you're listening to this and maybe kind of get an idea of who they are and who you'd want to see and, and all that. And then if you want to, you know, maybe pay that $10 for one month and see what you can catch on uh, Stardom World. That, and that's actually a great segue, man, is Stardom World. So Stardom World is their streaming service, it's like New Japan World. Now, there's some issues, though, bro. Stardom World does not show their matches live a lot of times. A lot of VOD. which Yeah, which sucks. So, But at the, at the same time, that's maybe not so bad for the Western audience because... Uh, you know, we're not all staying up at 3 a.m. to watch live shows. Hey, you uh, guys aren't. Coast, right? I am, but I will tell you this. You, yeah, but I think you're you're a vampire, so you're a <laughs> unique approach. True. Um, you know, I think if you got a nine to five job or whatever, you're not necessarily gonna, you know, yeah, go to work on two hours sleep because you were watching some wrestling. Yeah, because you're so watching some random Korakuen so show of stardom. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, some Road Two show or whatever. Exactly. Um. So that might not be the biggest deterrent in the world, um, but at the same time, I think people that are just getting into it aren't going to dive in right away with live shows. Maybe they're going to want to watch a few matches and uh, cherry pick some uh, of you know cherry pick some matches and some talents and learn more about the factions. So maybe that's not so uh, not such a big deal right now. Yeah, and and you know when I first watched it, I, I did get Stardom World for a little bit there. And you know what I did? I had a notebook, and I would write down their name, and then how I remember them. Like, okay, that's the chick with the fans. Okay, that's this person, you know? Um, so hopefully this helps people with that sort of thing. And a, a, a lot of you guys listening, you will have heard these names before. So I hope that we're, like, putting the puzzle together a little bit. You have all these puzzle pieces in your head, so I hope we're kind of putting them into place here for you. But uh, Stardom World, it is a good service. Um... Technically, it does have issues, a lot like New Japan World. Not as good as, you know, we always talk about Japanese media and internet and how bad it is. I will say uh, DDT and NOAA do have pretty good online services, just to be honest there. Very American professional looking. Um, so, Is that Wrestle Universe? Wrestle Universe, yeah. They have like... Huge media graphics and awesome graphics for the menus where New Japan just has like text. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not very user friendly. But I mean, in terms of the production value, uh, New Japan World has a lot of really good documentaries and stuff too. True. I don't know if Stardom has any of that kind of thing. They have some of it that is, that is like kind of documentary stuff, not as deep as New Japan World. But um, and one really cool thing I will say about Stardom World is a lot of their shows are split match by match, so you can just click on the match and watch the match. Yeah, New Japan World was starting to do that, but now they've kind of shied away from it a little bit. It seems like, or it takes them a while to break them off. It takes them a little bit, and then it's like in Japanese translated English, so it's like game six. It's like no, it's match six, not right. game six. Right. Um, it's Google translated. Yeah, exactly. Just all. Google translated. So that is Stardom World. I believe it's nine ninety nine yen with like eight eight ninety dollars, eight point nine dollars, something like that. Right, right. Um, yeah. so yeah, I know another streaming service we got to pay for. I get it, but <laughs> um, definitely something to try out. Um, if you're interested, maybe give it a month or two, and uh, you know, maybe you can cut something out to keep it. Or whatever. Yeah, cut out that HBO Max. I will say this, though. You know, there are all sorts of ways to watch this stuff. I am not telling anyone to go do that. No, actually, I look, I will say, hey, watch Stardom how you can. And if you like it, you can dive in a little more, right? I mean, <clears throat> that's all I'll say on that. If you can put some money in those wrestlers' pockets, whether it's buying one of those calendars. <laughs> exactly. Or one of their pictures with their autographs. Uh, if, if you if you're gonna consume it on a regular basis, uh, find a way to to make sure some money gets into their pockets. Yeah, dude, I've been subscribed to New Japan World for multiple years now, and I don't always use it. You know what I'm saying? But right. um, I I love New Japan, and uh, I, sadly, I even pay for Peacock. But that's that's a whole different issue. 
So, yes, that... Hey, at least you can watch all the Harry Potter movies. Yeah, you know, and Law, you and Order S- Law and Order SVU. Dum dum. Yeah, I, I can binge some Law and Order SVU unless the, some of the episodes are dumb, but... Um, Actually, that's what I watch on Peacock is Law and Order SVU. To be honest, there you go. So, uh, yeah. So some uh, some o- older wrestlers from Stardom that uh, we have talked about is Io Shirai, totally decorated wrestler in Stardom. I think at one point she was Cage Mash's top rated wrestler. Um, Doesn't surprise me if you've seen any of her stuff in NXT. That shouldn't surprise you. Yeah. So, and if you could just imagine her in Japan doing more of a Japanese style, you can see what we're talking about here. So, um, but really, an ace of, a former ace of stardom that, uh, you know, has gone on to America and is well known now in America. Same thing with Kairi Hojo, Kairi Sane, right? So. Yep, yep. With that awesome elbow drop and her really cool kind of sailor gimmick, um, definitely a former stardom wrestler. Another former one is Arisa Hoshiki, and she just retired a couple years ago. She was one of my favorites, though. She wore all yellow. She was so cool. She kind of had all these crazy kicks, and sadly, she's gone. And uh, there was Kagetsu. Sadly, I'll tell you this, Justin. There is a bit of a trend of stardom wrestlers kind of retiring or quitting early um Hmm. i don't know why i hope everything's safe i hope that they have a good background uh locker room but there's been a trend there and it's kind of a, a disheartening one um so i don't know what's up with that by the way did you hear who just signed a contract with new japan no chase owens Oh, yeah, 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 I did. Yeah, I heard that. Resigned. Still a multi-year contract. That's... Well, he, uh, he, I think he's really there for life. I mean. He wouldn't, he wouldn't it's... probably be pushed anywhere else, and he has his spot. So it's like, why? You know, I, I think he's been super loyal to that company, and whenever they needed a fill-in, he's always there. They can count on him. Yeah. He... Um, they know he's not going to ask for too much in terms of, you know, a push or maybe even money-wise. And let's be honest, I don't think WWE or AEW no. are cry- are crawling up to sign him. He's a solid wrestler, but you know, I think for probably likes he Japan. Probably has the most. He probably likes Japan, but I also think he he has the most value in Japan. Yeah, not only for himself but for them. I think it's just a, it's probably a, you know, and he can do strong. He can do. He can probably pop up on Impact here and there true um, shit he could pop up in aew so, yeah he's perfect mid-card gaijin talent for new japan mm-hmm. but he would be the bottom of the card anywhere else you know uh if, if I, that you know i mean it's just yeah i mean i can't see him going down to nxt and vince sees him with his shirt off and he oh wants god him no that's not happening oh he has he has a but, great um, spot that he can is is trusted in and I, I was going to say, like, they've been rewarding him, too. They have. Like, they gave him that win over Tanahashi. Um, I'd rather see they, him had, than fucking you know, Yujiro win over Okada. So. Yeah. I, he's yeah, better so than I mean, Yujiro, dude. Right. And I can see him at some point maybe having a little more of a... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what his role is. I know he... Wasn't he on that... Sp- speaking out i don't even know the story but he was called out for a minute with some of that stuff but um Mm. i just think that he probably has more value in japan than anywhere and japan has more use for him than any other uh company in the world yeah exactly any and he's come a long way as a wrestler i think he's you know pretty serviceable he has I, i guess i guess in you know in wrestling though are you going to go that next step and get on that full training regimen and do the things that no normal human can do? You know what? I think the guy works hard, but some people, not everyone's going to look like, you know, John Cena or Hiroshi Tanahashi. Like, you know, the, if you don't have the genetics to get you to look like it's that, true. There's a lot of gen- it doesn't matter. There's a lot of genetics, and even though steroids are legal in Japan, he has decided not to indulge, which is probably the, for the better, so... 
good on Chase Owens. Um, couple more things here with the stardom. I, I uh, first of all, just a uh, couple tournaments, and then just uh, another one more wrestler. So the tournaments pretty much similar to New Japan and any other Japanese company. You got your G1 style tournament, right? Mm-hmm. Which is the five star Grand Prix. There you go. Okay. It's the G1. Grand Prix. Yeah. Now, then you have the Cinderella tournament, which is kind of like the New Japan Cup. The difference here is that there is some weird booking shit with the Cinderella tournament that sadly I don't remember, where it's like the first loser gets to pick this and then do this and come back, you know, some weird stuff like that. There's like a loser's bracket or it's, something it's, that they can get back into the bracket. Yeah, or it's something kind of weird, more along the lines of DDT. But the the winner of the tournament, I now I love this. You know, usually it's like winner gets a shot at the championship. Um, mm-hmm. For the Cinderella tournament, the winner gets a wish, and that's pretty fun hmm. because you could wish for a match. You could wish for a faction to fucking disappear, which, like, usually they'll, like, turn it into a storyline angle, you know? You can wish uh, for someone to join your faction. So it's kind of a a device to do some cool booking angles. A storyline, yeah, a, a, a swerve device, if you will. Yeah, so I think that's a fun thing, and it's become a multi night tournament. And that's a tournament I really recommend people check out every year um, because because of the kind of connotations. And it's funny, too, because the winner comes out in a beautiful dress. You know what I mean? And just... Uh, okay. Um, so. To make their announcement of what they're doing with their he, wish. Yeah. So, um, finally, I want to talk about Act Yusukawa. Act Yusukawa, all the major fans know about this, and I hope I get it right, but... Um, Act Yusukawa can't really wrestle much anymore um, because she got seriously injured. Uh, and uh, the reason she got seriously injured was because she had a match in stardom with someone named Yoshiko. And Yoshiko shot on her and beat the shit out of her. Caved her eye yeah. in and oh, fucked her geez. up. And that was a big, I mean, it's like the stardom incident because it was a confusing thing because no one, like, stepped in and stopped the match. You know what I'm saying? Um, Hmm. No, you know, it's like Act Yusukawa was bleeding everywhere. Um, So... I'm going to read you, this was written in 2015 by a huge stardom fan um, named um, Sonny Gutierrez, who I've heard that name before. So, um, I'm going to just read this to you about the incident, okay? okay? I'm 48 hours removed from Sunday's stardom show, and I'm still trying to decompress my thoughts. No matter how many times you go to Caracuan Hall, every time you walk through the stairwell and through the doors, the history and prestige hits you. This is going to be, um, let's go through here. Um, yeah, and acted had a myriad of health problems. Uh, she had Graves disease and, uh, kind of battled a lot of stuff and went back and forth. Um, but, uh, once all the formalities had ended and the match between Act and Yoshiko began, that feeling of excitement and anticipation for the match dissipated. I was there to see my friend, Act Yoshikawa, wrestling a pro wrestling match, but instead I saw Yoshiko beat her bloody with repeated punches to the face. I had a knot in my stomach as I watched, knowing that it just wasn't right and wishing that I could do something to help her. But knowing I couldn't do anything, I'm sure was I was the only person in the crowd feeling that way. Kraken Hall was silent. Um, the referee looked to Rossi Ogawa for guidance, and with 50-plus years of experience, they failed to act. The match was stopped when Kyoko Kimura threw in a towel. So, that was like a big incident that happened in stardom, and really hasn't been explained fully, man. But it's it's kind of creepy, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I guess in a way it does have add an element of rogue quality that might attract people to it but at the same time that kind of sucks 
Yeah, and it's hard to watch. I actually don't recommend people go watch this because act literally being punched in the face, you know, having hair pulling out, and she's tr- still trying to do spots, you know? Mm. When clearly this was not a wrestling match anymore. And uh, Yoshiko is back in stardom nowadays. And um, mm. people, you know, wonder, like, why is Yoshiko back in stardom after what she did to act? And... Uh, you know, only Rossi Ogawa knows that. So, um, uh, just a weird moment in stardom, but definitely pales in comparison to uh, Hana Kimura. Um, so, did you know about Hana before um, she passed away? No. Okay. Okay. No, I honestly hadn't heard of her until then. Well, uh, everyone knows if you're listening to this, but Hana Kimura um, unalived herself uh, after facing criticism from fans on Twitter about a fake angle that they did on a reality show she was on. And Hana was being groomed to be the new face of stardom. Um, so, I mean, Hana... Her mother was a famous wrestler. Kyoko too, right? Kimura, yeah, and Kyoko wrestled in right. Stardom as well. Um, so, and and Hana was kind of like Julia. She was almost exotic and beautiful in her own very unique way. Um, a strong girl, like a strong physique, kind of for a Japanese wrestler. And uh, and I think she was half Japanese, half Chinese, or. Um, I think that was part of what she was being uh, flamed online for, too, was her being of mixed ethnicity or race or Hmm. nationality. She's listed Um, as uh, just a Japanese wrestler, so I don't don't know exactly about that, but she definitely did... um, Indonesian. Indonesian? Okay. Half Indonesian, half Japanese. Okay. She was bullied as a child because of her mixed mixed ethnic Ah. heritage. So that's when we talked about, kind of before we went on, we talked about how Japan is very, can be very xenophobic at times. Yeah. um, Just because it's a country with just one, you know, uh, one type of person, I guess you can say. Um, You know, so that kind of things happen in countries like that, but... Yes, I think a lot of it was she was somewhat bullied online, and a lot of it was, I think, from what I heard, uh, had to do with her being mixed race mm, as well. Yeah, I, I could see that. Um, like you said, in Japan, everyone's Japanese, right? Like, um, Yeah, mixed ethnicity is what I'm saying, not race. Uh-huh. Ethnicity, yeah, so... Um, yeah, she was being groomed. She had feud with Julia at the time. Um, very exciting because with her charisma, huge charisma, and just exciting. Um, not the best wrestler at the time, which really doesn't matter in hindsight at all. But she uh, she was she was being pushed with Tokyo Cyber Squad, um, and because of the criticism, she ingested hydrogen sulfide and. Uh, committed suicide, which actually, you know, it created a, a huge, a lot of talk in the industry. Um, I believe that the people, res- well, look, look, it was a suicide, so she was responsible for it in the end, right? But there were people who pushed her, and I mean, I think that they actually had criminal charges put <coughs> against some of them, excuse me, <coughs> which is like, some harassment charges. Yeah, yeah. which which again, it's it's Wrong a whole uh, interesting kind of political idea about freedom of speech and other stuff like that. But um, you know, it was just such a shocking situation, and I think that also turned a lot of people's eyes towards stardom. It was not a good thing at all that happened. I mean, no, and there's nothing good about that. But I think that did make it wasn't good publicity for stardom, but also I think. Um, a lot of the, I don't think stardom was held as accountable as that reality show and whatever production company. Terrace House, yeah. I think they're the ones that, I think that is, I think that was mostly what, um, was responsible for it. I don't necessarily think it was, um, 
stardom and stardom fans. Yeah. Necessarily. I could be completely wrong on this, but I really think it was centered around the reality show he's on. Maybe she felt pressure to be on that reality show through stardom. I don't know. Well, the fact is... To get some more mainstream uh, uh, attention on their product. The fact is that we couldn't talk about stardom without uh, talking about Hana. uh, No, absolutely not. Especially, um, probably a lot of people didn't hear of stardom that were wrestling fans maybe till they heard of Hana Kimura. Yeah, yeah. So, R.I.P. Hana, and, um, you know, kind of a sad way to end our talk about stardom. So, let's just talk now real quick about, like, kind of the future of stardom real quick. You know, um, a lot of those top guys I talked about, you know, it's obviously hard to segue from that to anything else. So, I guess we should just move on. Um well, we can also just say what's their next big event and what's something that people can catch on with. Maybe that would help. Yeah, there we go. And I actually don't know their next big event, so I'm kind of looking it up. Um, I go to Stardom World. Oh, there you go. It looks like... Oh, no, no. I'm trying to see when their stuff usually is. Okay, here we go. So the Nagoya, no, I just watched that one. Okay, we got this the Cinderella tournament. It's at the end of February. So there we awesome. go. And that's where you told people to dive in. So great perfect. place to dive in here at the end of February 23. Exciting, and we are. And I, I would imagine if you are purchasing Stardom World, you would probably want to do it now because you get it at the beginning of February and you'll have it for the whole month. So if you were to dive into the um cinderella tournament you probably want to join now and do some catch up because if you join if you do the cinderella tournament at the end of the month you might as well get your money's worth so you're not charged again in march i totally agree with that it is just the fourth now so yeah you guys should really hit that up right now Uh, also uh they're doing that so it's going to be a one-day tournament this year it's going to be at city hall plaza aori nagaoka which is in nagaoka Japan and uh, wow, very interesting looking venue here. Kind of crazy looking, actually, man. If you see these pictures here, mm. very interesting and unique. Um, oh, okay, they have a basketball arena, so it'll be in a nice. Well, most of those halls that they're have in, like a basketball uh, area you know, too. Yeah, the well, the gym, you know, like Ota City Gymnasium or any of those kind of places are going to have a basketball. Set. Yeah. Or some type of court sport, volleyball. Okay, or yeah, exactly. I will tell you though, this venue is very unique looking um, from the outside. So that is exciting. They're doing that tournament there. I'm going to watch that live. And uh, also, on that tournament, it's going to be Saya Kamatani versus Natsupoi for that white belt, which is exciting. And a month later, Shuri versus Julia for the red belt. Big deal. Mm. So. Very. What's that event that that's going to be? That's called called? World Climax. So is that their WrestleMania? Um, the no, I don't think that is. I think that there is Dream Dream Queendom, um, which just Mm. happened recently. But uh, actually, I think what they're doing is like a a four person tournament for the red belt. So um, pretty pretty exciting there. And that's actually going to be at the Ryogoku Kogekikan, which is... Is that called Sumo Hall? Is that what they call Sumo Hall? Ryogoku. Yeah, know. yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, the Sumo Hall show coming up. Man, a lot of exciting stuff here for Stardom, guys. So, jump in, man. It's cool. And I hope that with some of this info, you can watch that and have a little bit of a better understanding of who they are, what's going on, and what to expect. The style ranges from kind of your high-flying, lucha-style stuff to more hard-hitting. Um, it really runs the gamut. You got comedy stuff, very funny comedy stuff. It's it's a lot like New Japan, really, or just, you know, any general Japanese promotion. I Well, I, I don't think DDT and uh, Dragon Gate are like New Japan very much, but, I mean, I will say it is... Well, I mean... There's a, it seems like it's a mix of all of them in a way. It, it is more like New Japan in that like those big matches are long and good, and you got your forearm smash spot, of course, right? That we see in every 
Um, so, yeah. but yeah. they're good, man. So, jump in, guys. So, yeah, I, I hope that helped you guys out. Um, yeah. Help me out. I'm glad. I hope you learned a little bit. I felt like I talked yeah. a little more than usual, talked a little too much. Might need some hot tea no, after no, this, this one. No, this was good. You kind of took me through it, and I, I, I think it... Um, people can pretend they're me during the show and kind of feel like they're getting talked to a little bit. And, so um, it was almost like a 101 or prerequisite course to watching stuff. There you go. Yeah, I will tell you this. I am, you know, I thought Stardom's last show was very good. It was very entertaining, good booking. Actually, some people have said the booking of Stardom is some of the best uh, in the world, but the booking was great. Um, and much unlike. The Royal Rumble. You remember that? The Royal Rumble this year? <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> you watched it? Yeah, I mean, it, I did, of course. The Royal Rumble, I, we, we did our Oh, yeah, huh? we Royal already, Rumble. I can't it's, surprise. It's going to be something we're going to, we're going to watch Royal Rumble no matter what. Uh, Hopefully. Let's hope um, that, like, it's always exciting to, because it's not impossible that it yeah. gets to a point where it's like, I ain't even going to watch this shit, bro. It's it's WWE does a really good job of, you know, you thinking maybe they're going to give us something different and then it just ends up being the same thing. Yeah. They're just, they're really good at that. Or something maybe that is like a little better. And then, uh, they, and I may have mentioned this on the show, but it's that circle of like, oh, they do something good and then they fail in booking or performance and then you... Then they do something good again, and then you get excited, and then they fail, and then they do. It just goes on forever. Yeah, it's almost like you think Al Bundy's going to win, and then of course <laughs> Al Bundy loses again. Of course. No, but they get your hopes up about something. But I mean, um, you think you have a wide open Royal Rumble, anyone can win, and then they just bring somebody in that, you know, <laughs> they bring Brock Lesnar back to win it. So it's like all that reason you watched is out the window because mm -hmm. you were like oh maybe it's going to be Big E he's going to get his shot at the title back maybe Drew Galloway is going to return and win it or Seth Rollins is going to come back like no we're just going to give it to Brock again you know what I mean like the same thing they did with the money in the bank and they did the same thing to me and the women's like um, we have a lot of storylines with women that we've been doing for the last year and then we just have someone that hasn't been there for two years oh coming god in. yeah <laughs> You know, um, by the way, speak, sp it's almost like the whole year didn't happen. You speaking know? of that, you remember like a couple weeks ago, I was like, hey, I heard that Ronda's going to win the Rumble and that she's going to come back. You remember I texted you that? Yeah. Like a lot of people put money on her and won big money because of that, dude. Yeah, I mean, I think it was starting to become kind of people, it seemed like people knew. Well, that was um, just what Meltzer reported but, straight up. He says, yeah, the plan is that she's going to come back and win. And, I was there. and your reaction was so funny. He it, Justin sends me just the plain face, like the just resting bitch face yeah. kind of. just. Well, you know what, though? Like, it's hard to criticize them for making those things happen because they're just, this is what a publicly traded company that could or isn't or is uh you know being rumored to try and put them in a position to sell or whatever yeah honestly if you're a company like if you can't think of anyone convincingly to win it's you, you go with the the proven attention getters brock lesnar and and, and i guess ronald well, rousey will get you some mainstream attention and it's the safe bet if you're not willing to try and create somebody new out of it or um you know elevate someone and 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 build them up uh they're just too afraid to do that well obviously. maybe that's part of the the wider issue with wwe that has been parroted over and over again so this is not new but they have a responsibility to be profitable and that's like we could get into like policy or whatever economics and everything we're not but like they have a responsibility to make money which they do they just had the most profitable year ever which we say every year but um stockholders that are responsible to yeah. they have that responsibility so they have in a sense that drives their booking they have to book what's going to get them the most money but uh it's a lot of hot shot booking too like oh what's going to get us the most money now instead of like who can we build that can become a star five years from now 
I, I don't think anyone at the top there is thinking five years ahead. Austin Theory. Not. That's about it. <laughs> I know, dude. I know. I know. I know. I mean... I know. I, Out of all the people from NXT yeah. to, like, choose and push and... It's Austin Theory. But, um... I mean, they're in money first. They're not... Like you said, you told me a few weeks ago, like, they're still somewhat responsible to USA and Fox about pulling in ratings. And... Um, are you going to get more ratings on SmackDown or Raw the next day when you have Bailey make a triumphant comeback and win the Royal Rumble? Or are you going to get it from Ronda Rousey winning the Royal Rumble, right? I mean... Yeah. Hey, I will tell you... Who are we I, kidding, w- right? Yeah. I will tell you this, though. I was kind of impressed with... Because I don't watch SmackDown, so... I was kind of impressed with the new uh, female announcer. It, it, I don't even know if she is new. Maybe she's been around for years, and I just uh, missed it. Because Greg Hamilton was announcing for them. Sadly, and shout-outs to Greg, he got in a real bad car crash a little bit ago. Um, like, real, real bad, dude. And I hope he's okay. Um, but he's not working for them anymore. And now they got Samantha Irvin doing announcing... Thought she did good. Did you even notice her? I don't think I did. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm watching it with two kids sometimes, and it's like I'm just looking for the countdown clock, you know. (laughs) I feel you. Yeah, I I, I honestly didn't. I mean, they switch up the announcers so much. But at the same time, if I didn't notice her, maybe that's a good thing because she blended in with everyone else. Probably. Did you, speaking of, like, the production, did you notice uh, Pat McAfee? I, he's hard not to notice, probably. I mean, yeah, I think he's just too much. You don't, I was telling you, like, it's like sometimes I like him when he's ser- he gets all serious, but, like, then he just does it when it's, like, not that big a deal. You know, some dude will... Well, he says the dumbest things, and he gets on the table, and dan- I'm like, come on, you're such... You're, it's like such a phony. Like uh, <laughs> he, he likes to get, like, like some dude will come in that's, like, jobber style, and he'll be like, and this guy goes and... Ticks, asses, and it's like, dude, no, he- yeah. Actually, I was kind of enjoying some of the heel work he was doing in NXT. I thought he did a decent job, to be honest. With mm. you. And he even did that. But when he was an in ring, you know, cage, yeah, or just the whole angle he was having with Pete Dunne on his side. I thought, and those guys, I thought was okay. Was you know, he showed he had some heel like uh, charisma. If you will, yeah, no um, bad, no bad bunny, but, but... <laughs> bad bunny is uh, man. <laughs> you guys, uh, Justin sends me a text like randomly, like, dude, bad bunny is legit. He is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, listen, man, he, I, he's almost part of the roster. I know, now, right? like, seriously. It seems like they could just call him to do anything, and he'll be there, and he seems to take it seriously. He doesn't demand the microphone. We didn't see him do a musical performance. No, nah, he just wrestles. He just literally came in to be in the Royal Rumble. And he's doing Destroyers and shit. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, and he did it pretty, like, he he looked like he's been working on it. Did and, he wear his full body suit? Because you know, I think I turned it off near uh, the end there. No, he was wearing, like... Comes you know, out in tights. Know, what, what do you mean? I... No, no, no. He didn't have. Tights. But he didn't. He, he didn't wear the Booker like, T like full body, like almost shield type of vest, and maybe I don't think he had the vest, but he wore like it was like a green kind of almost like military shirt, uh... and like kind of cargo pants ish type thing. But it wasn't like I'm very um, interested. I don't know if it was a jumpsuit or not. Okay. Could have been. Bad Bunny Royal Rumble. I'm looking for pictures. Oh, okay. He just wore normal clothes, basically. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, just a green shirt and some jeans or something. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool, man. Bad Bunny's trying to kill it in the game. He's on multiple fronts. I mean, Wale did some stuff with WWE. Doesn't get in the ring, though. Bad Bunny loves it. So... Um, yeah, I think he takes it seriously, and he's somebody that they probably should do more with because um, he would probably bring in, you know, he's huge. You know, you might not like or know his music, but no, I've, I've, he I, is I, very popular. Yeah, I, I know he's he's wildly popular, you know, for old 
people like me uh, or people who don't listen to the radio and maybe don't quite get it. But also, I don't watch Below Deck Mediterranean, and that show gets, like, the highest ratings. So, I mean, it happens. I mean, the bottom line is if WWE is looking to get 20-something and teenagers into And wrestling, Latin audience as well, because he is Spanish-speaking. And Latin audiences, Puerto Rican. Um he is a good get, a big get for them. And also, whenever they put his merch on WWE shop, it sells really? out really fast. Yeah. Sign Bad Bunny. Yeah, maybe they've stocked it up better now. But when they initially put some stuff up after WrestleMania around that time, it was gone. Um, so he's he mer- he moves merchandise, and uh, you know he's huge. So. I want to see. Honestly, bro, I want to see Bad Bunny versus Stephen Amell just to see where they're at. Okay, so um, well, I'm good on that. I, don't even, <laughs> I, I I think that's you know I I like I said they should probably use him more for the interest of ratings and just you know people buying into stuff. You think they should have announced but, him though beforehand because um, that helps. There was rumors that he was going to be there, so I think that's yeah. Enough, but the, just like the but normal people Rousey. don't know that shit, bro, at all. It's only you and I that know what the quote unquote rumors are. I mean, I guess that's true, but um, well, that's the thing is like a lot of people want, and then oh, there was a whole Shane McMahon thing. Maybe talk oh about god, the two but apparently, I've always heard that Shane was fun to, was good to work with. And people always preferred him out of any of the McMahons. Have I, am I totally just have bad no, memory and resource? I have no clue, dude. You know, unlike, you know, Dave Meltzer, I don't know, I don't hear things about him all the time. Um, I only hear what other people report. And I just heard that, what was it? I heard Wade Keller talk about, or like he came in and he had produced the Rumble in the past, but he just... You know, and who knows what this means, but he rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And uh, and he basically got told to go home. I mean, that's as much as I, as I feel like that I can say with confidence is that he came in, rubbed people the wrong way, changed some things up that were... I think Meltzer was saying that he's always known to be coming up with ridiculous storylines that people kind of laughed at for whatever reason... It got amplified this year, and uh, he pissed a lot of people off and tried to throw his weight around and put himself in a better position. And allegedly, he was supposed to be in the the, the uh, elimina- elimination. Well, chamber dude, I was hearing rumors he was supposed to win it against Brock Lesnar. I don't. They know were why. planning for him against Bobby Lashley, dude. What the fuck? I I don't know how that would be true. I- I don't understand why they would do that ever. I mean, I mean, I guess he's fifty something and he's in tremendous shape. I heard he was—that's for sure. I heard he was really legitimately punching people in the face in the match. <laughs> That's a... I, I know that Shane. You talk about what you want with Shane, but Shane is Shane has had some of the most uh, death-defying stunts in the history of professional wrestling. Uh, at least in WWE with some of the stuff he's done. Just, he definitely doesn't do things halfway. Well, he did actually have a good wrestling match against AJ Styles. AJ Styles, which was like a legit... Right. But, uh, by the way, a little sidebar here for everyone, I, and, I, and this is some trivia for you. I just want you to know that Goldberg, who appeared on SmackDown tonight, he has wrestled 43 minutes... Since his return in 2016, okay? And that means he makes $20 million an hour. I have never been a Goldberg fan. Yeah. And I saw on, on, on social media that he came out to challenge Roman Reigns. And that's, once again, it's like, I it's just not for me, man. <laughs> I like watching Roman Reigns wrestle people, like... But I don't like the way they, you know, I loved watching him wrestle Seth Rollins, but they had just had a, a really stupid ending. And it's like, uh, they just, I don't know, it's just not for me, man. I like New Japan and and probably want to get into stardom more. And AEW is good too, but um, I just don't understand repeatedly having to go back to like guys like Goldberg. Don't you think if Goldberg was going to give you ratings, he would have done it? <laughs> 
in 2018. Hey, they, only they like, know. Only know. they know the amount of people that are watching their uh, special events. Although the numbers for the Saudi show will probably be very low, since it's on at what 9 a.m. Pacific on a Friday or Thursday. Um, I mean, if they really wanted to, I don't know why they don't just give give the Rock a blank check and get him back. Yeah. Um. <laughs> they probably have tried. But, I mean, I don't know. It just seems like, do we really need to see a 55-year-old Goldberg wrestle? I mean, what the hell? I, I, uh, I, I, mean, I, I agree, man. Um, you know, uh, we kind of gave our opinions of the Royal Rumble in general. Let's. You want to talk about some uh, yeah. breaking news real quick? A couple things? You down for that? What's breaking? Yeah. Well, I don't me. know if it's breaking. Maybe some stuff you've heard. But we'll just talk about a couple news stories here. So, Tony Khan said on Busted Open Radio that the Forbidden Door shall be opening very soon again. Yeah, I mean, that's the... They're going to have a big announcement for the summer, I have a feeling. Yeah. I think the only thing they're waiting for is is Japan to to loosen up a little bit more. I mean, that's got to be coming soon. Well, he just posted a tweet that said, The Forbidden Door can be open for anyone from any wrestling company in the world, whether or it not it's a company AEW is on good terms with. Even if it's someone from a company that's open for business, they're also welcome to slam the door in the face of their prior company. Wow. Don't know what that means exactly, but shit. That could be a gimmick. Who knows? Uh, uh, uh. They should be making some storylines out of this. They can have a working relationship with Impact, but make it seem like it's not a working relationship. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, there, uh, there could. I think we're gonna start seeing a, a little with all this stuff. We'll probably start seeing a little bit of a carny side to uh, um, Tony Khan or AEW to co- to Tony to Tony to. Uh, to Tony Khan. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's kind of done a little bit of stuff like that in the past. He's, I am the Forbidden Door, you know, fun stuff like that. So, um, so yeah. some other news here. Did you hear any news about the Jade Cargill interview on Talk is Jericho? No. Um, you're done, Kenzo? But I did hear about how he, she said, uh, there was some story I didn't click on. It said why she signed with AEW instead of WWE. So, was that what she talked about on Jericho? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I listened to it this morning, and it was actually, so what it was was, she's like, I'm not going to say who told me this, but you know, it's probably Triple H. Probably? Mm -hmm. Um, but they kind of had it like, so she said that she makes really good money, right? Basically like not wrestling. She's a model and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And she said that they told her like, are you going to have the passion to do wrestling? Because the other people here are hungry for it. Are you hungry for it? And here's the crazy part. They said, well, you have a family. What are you going to do about your family? And she told him how she would take care of her family. And then they told her, well, because this is going to be your new family now. So you're going to have to rearrange your priorities. And then she said, "I'm uh, yeah, that's, I'm good then. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just crazy. Like, you've always heard in WWE, they kind of instill this mindset of like, you know, it's... Uh, almost making it more competitive in a way than it really is which it is extremely competitive but in wwe they almost like you know how much they want you to worship the company basically but exactly exactly they want you to go in there you know basically programmed you to worship them and do whatever they say yeah um yeah so that was pretty interesting and that's almost more important to them than you know the type of ability you have. yeah no totally dude they it's almost like the military in there they want you to and they do they they break you down and build you back up right if you're cut and the only reason why guys like they even re-sign guys like kevin owens and Sami Zayn is just to keep them away from those other companies i don't know all about that i think they like those guys as wrestlers but yeah but i mean they're not going to be world champions no Maybe Kevin Owens at some again, point yeah. again, but I don't. I, 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 well, look well, at if Mus- they went to AEW. I don't necessarily think. Look at Mustafa Ali, bro. I mean, dude, asked for his release now. You know they're gonna make him sit for like 
months on end. He's got a year or more on his contract, dude. Yeah. He could have a real well, shitty time. Well, they'd rather time. pay them to stay home. They'd rather pay him to stay home. Then that's been a thing of theirs for years, not just recently. So yeah. So um, you know, if Ali did get released and stuff, like, what do you think of this idea that Tony Khan is a wrestling collector? That like, in terms of what of wrestlers, like or he just collects in- wrestlers he likes, doesn't necessarily use them um, that much. Kind of like. Well, it seems like almost every promotion does that a little bit. Yeah, I like the other day I was like, where the fuck has Miro been? He's been out for a while, but they've run little promos of him for a while, but I mean he could be have he could have an injury. Where is Red Dragon at? But at the same time, sometimes these guys just want a little time off. He worked pretty hard for about a year, year and a half, and now he gets a little time That's off. That's true, man. Know. Maybe they're just like, hey, I want to do like a little program, and then... It, it looks like AEW does tend to give time off to their wrestlers um, a little bit more than other companies do. Well, yeah. I mean, they only usually... The top wrestlers only work once a week anyways. And, I mean, then they have, right. they have enough now, stars yeah. to have a whole other program with someone else, which is kind of nice. There's something to be said about that, but there's also something to be said about getting in that experience. But once you're a veteran, Kenny Omega level, you know, it's like you don't need to wrestle every day, dude. No. And, well, Kenny's a different story now. I think he's just flat out really banged up and injured, we've talked about before. But he was someone else but, like like um, Matt Seidel, right? Like, he doesn't need to wrestle every day. Plus, they have a lot of just guys at the top of the card right now like you know i would imagine maybe you know we had the punk and mjf thing go on um who did we have and we had kind of daniel uh brian danielson kind of come out there with moxley uh, john moxley yeah i i could see maybe danielson next program and he's going to take a few months off after no but he's talking about teaming Uh, up with moxley i know i know but whatever that angle is done I could see him taking a few months off. Um, yeah, I could also see Punk taking a few oh, months off. Oh well, for, you he's know, pretty soon. He's too. been going nonstop, dude. God, he's probably the face of the company yeah. at this point. And at some point, they'll probably give MJF a little time off. So they're gonna. They have so many guys at the top. Well, and hang on, MJF that, only wrestles like once every four months, anyways, dude. <laughs> so yeah, I I thought they really. It, it seems like it wasn't almost. Uh, AEW booking to make that Punk uh, MJF match seemed to it happened really fast. It, it seemed like. Yeah, I mean, I thought they were going to draw that. I'm out sure a they're longer. going to. It's just they that are I don't going really to. It's know. not over yet, man. We have a, in our minds. We have a roadmap for the years of uh, you know New Japan and for WWE. I don't. I haven't quite nailed that roadmap for AEW. So it's not like. Oh well, they're gonna drag the MJF thing to SummerSlam or whatever. There's we don't have that kind of. Uh, it seems like they do, in a way, have a pay per view quality dynamite once a month. They do, and they have like. their special shows, uh, their special dynamite shows. Yeah, yeah, it totally reminds you of like a way that uh, WCW Jim Crockett was in the. 80s. Yeah, um, well, we'll see what is like. I mean, Revolution is a month away now, so um, we'll see. They already they have the poster with uh, CM Punk right in the middle of it, but who knows what that means. So uh, pretty, pretty interesting there. Um, moving on to some other news. AEW is interesting in signing Keith Lee. No surprise there, uh, I right? I love Keith Lee, but I don't know where they would, what they would do with him. Well, I mean, do you think that's for like any good wrestler that they would sign at this point, or? I, I think everyone that's not WWE should be interested in Keith Lee, but it's one of those things where like, do you want or need him? Yeah. Um, I think Keith Lee would benefit from maybe going to uh, New Japan Strong would be a great place for him. Yeah. You know, Keith Lee is 37. Um, um, yeah. Um, and maybe 
I would love to see him and Jonah. That would be fun. I would love to see him with a lot of those so, uh, New Japan strong guys. Um, I was going to say Brody King, yeah, but he's he'll in probably AEW make now. His, well, you know what, though? He could uh, meet him at PWG or you know, New Japan Strong, because I'm sure Brody King's still going to be doing those as well. So Yeah. I think a similar... He could sign with AEW and, you know, swing around. He could just be one of those tweener guys that does AEW Impact in New Japan. That's why I think he's best splitting his time, not just being full-time mm. uh, AEW. Okay. Okay. Oh, and uh, sorry, I didn't... Okay, I have a little more about that Furbin Door thing. That is going to be on Dynamite this Wednesday. That, uh, yeah, a, a, a top wrestler will walk through the Forbidden Door. Be careful on that one because you remember when uh, Tony Khan said, we're having a world-breaking announcement tonight of a blah, 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 and then it was like the, FT, it was it was the FTW Gata. title. And it's uh, like... Uh, we'll see. It's He's going to get the ECW. He's going to get Matt Cardona or something. Yeah. Yeah, and then a little kind of uh, Kenny Omega and Osprey feuding on Twitter, which is kind of cute. You see that? Kenny Omega and Osprey. I mean, that that's a match that would. Oh. Love, I would love, we got to see at some point in the next. I would see that's got to be if they're having one of these stadium shows, and and that can happen. That's got to be on the card. It's kind of funny because Will Osprey posts something that said the chase begins, and it's a picture of Kenta Kabash. Chase Owens. No, it's it's a picture of Kenta Kobashi, Misawa, Okada, and Omega. And Omega says, keep sending your fan cam footage of your zero pressure indies and you might just pull it off. I would do the same for some easy fives, but I understand the difference between what an Arena Dome Budokan main event means compared to when you play with your mates a few blocks over at your call. So, a little fake <laughs> feud there. Um which kind of he's referring to the match at your call. Now, I talked to you about this recently, and uh, I didn't watch it yet, and I'm so sad. I want to watch it. I'll probably watch it after we talk, but uh, you don't know anything about Michael Oku, by the way, who went against it. I've heard the name, but um, I've never seen him. Yeah, a uh, British wrestler, um, and uh, the match looks like it could be really great. They're saying it's... I heard it's like a late '70s style match, oddly enough, and that there's not that much high flying in it. So um, there's mm. a lot of like, I heard it was good. Girls screaming, good. like, and then you know other characters coming it's out. It's like 47 minutes. Is though. it 47 minutes? Yeah, it's a. Well, long the really long. cool thing about it is, and a lot of Osprey being an absolute dick and heel. So. Yeah, I've heard the heel work was good. I, I mean, yeah. Uh, Meltzer yeah, said me the heel work is like he even said like oh MJF wishes he could do heel work this good which was crazy to me I I remember thinking like really that's that seems intense well you know um, Osprey um, you know we've heard it like oh he I mean I'm not like I know we texted about it earlier but apparently he had a really good match um, with Brian Cage and. I think Brian Cage is a little bit better wrestler than people give him credit for, and I think he's got he he does a lot of he's got a lot he's a great athlete, um, but you know Will Osprey is being one of those guys where he could just take anyone to a great match. You know? Yeah, and Will Osprey's um, like in his prime himself. and like even getting better too. Which yeah, is right, and this is a guy that's only in his mid twenties. Yeah, I think is he not um, in his late twenties now? Is he really that young? Probably 27, Yeah, yeah, something like that. He's pretty young. He, he, but it... 26. Look, I don't mean to sound like an old man, but I, st I still remember, like, Okada is only 28, and now he's, like, 34 or something. He's <laughs> 35. It's like, fuck, what happened? Which is not... That was six years ago, yeah. so... <laughs> um, but yeah. he is he is 28, um, so, yeah. Uh, Will Osprey. Yeah. Very so young, yeah. So, um Definitely, uh, I I recommend that match, even though I haven't seen it, guys. Um, it's Rev Rev Pro, and for the New Japan fans out there, you got Yota Suji versus Shota Umino, and you drew a picture of Yota Suji from that event. I yeah. did, I did. I don't know if it was from that. I'm event, pretty sure it was, was dude. To, sometimes. One of the more challenging things for me to do sometimes is like when I want to draw someone is finding a good picture of them to draw. So, um, 
it, it makes it very difficult. So I had to kind of guess, piece it together because a lot of these promotions, I know that New Japan has a problem of just not having updated the high quality and, renders, especially for they young just lions. Don't get, uh, they don't get those uh, um, updated shots of people in like their new gear or kind of personas. Yeah. Uh, Okada is wearing, you know, when you see the matchup uh, graphic, it's Okada with his outfit from two years ago or whatever. You, you, um, you know, quick recommendation, man. You can always follow like wrestling weekly or whatever on instagram whatever the japanese magazine is for pro wrestling because dude they have like all the photographers right there in the ring you know what i mean because you see out, yeah. the photographers scrambling down there at every new japan event like that's those guys well uh, let me find it magazine? real quick on instagram um because if i'm logged in on uh my i am logged in here so let me find it here because it always uh, n- not now. Okay, we'll see if anything is posted here. Oh, and I see your picture here of Yoda Tsuji already with 13 likes. Good job, man. Um, so, hey, just saying, you just posted it, like, a little bit ago, right? That's true. So, it's yep. weekly pro, re- weekly underscore pro underscore wrestling. That's right. Uh, weekly, oh, I see. I already oh, follow okay. it. Oh, okay. Yeah, they they I, if you ever go to their thing, like they just have all sorts of. I think they follow me. What? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Out of they the 618 me. people, they follow you. Well, it's possible they saw your drawings and stuff, so. but they are cool because they've got like recent pictures and old pictures and. No, I don't. They don't. I thought. And they might. every from every different promotion, yeah. you know, I'm looking at here. There's a picture of Shinsuke Nakamura on top of. Uh, Okada's back. Um, okay. Well, I'll, I'm going to look for them for subjects then. You you might sure. have to browse through them, though, because there's a lot of old pictures. A lot of old pictures. So. That's fine. I might want some old ones. Um, I had, You know, it's funny we mentioned this because, like, randomly this week I had Joey Janela start following me. That's awesome. And I'm like, well, I sh- probably should draw a picture of Joey Janela. There you Janela. go. Now, did he actually notice it? And I did, and... He did. He did. Sweet. He retweeted it on Twitter, and he he um, put it in his story on uh, Instagram. Thank you, Joey Janela. By the way, I heard Joey Janela was considering yeah, going to NXT. I'm like, don't do it, bro. Just don't do it. I I I, I like Joey Janela a lot, and you know what? He's low key one of the bigger guys on the indies. I don't really think he needs to get a single contract and. I thought when AEW had to, you know, let, I don't know if they let him go or his contract ran out. I don't really, I think he can, you know, he does his spring break and I think he has established himself on the indies to be able to, you know, be on his own. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Oh, well, that was, I guess that can fit into uh, quote unquote news. So, yeah, man. Um, anything else you want to tell the fans? We got our info out there. We talked about stardom. Talked a little Royal Rumble, which probably we talked about as much as it deserves. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it it broke our heart this year. We put dedicated a whole show to it. And deserved it, you know, the history and all that. What, what stuff. are you looking forward to um, coming up here? This, um, looking forward to you know actually maybe getting into stardom and diving into stardom a little bit. Um, looking forward to. Uh, I'm looking forward to New Japan mm-hmm. kind of loosening up and coming over here a little bit, and uh, should be an exciting uh, late spring, early summer. Well, they've got that uh, that that uh, junior title match coming up too, which looks pretty exciting. Wado and Desperado. Is that what it is? Wado and Desperado. Yeah, Desperado. Yeah. I'm looking here. We've got. Uh, 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 this looks interesting, dude. A never championship lumberjack. No, okay, never mind. I thought it was Shingo. It's it's Ishii versus Evil in a lumberjack match. That sounds like shit. So uh, forget about that lumberjack match because it's going to be all Bullet Club guys on the outside. So poor Evil, e- just totally done. One of the mo- most popular guys in New Japan, and now. People- uh, 
this and well I guess there's still there's a lot of people that wear House of Torture stuff. Who? Um in the crowds. I think domestically they're a little popular. Um okay. but obviously um not here. And you know, they took a I mean Evil wasn't the greatest wrestler in the world, but he had a cool entrance and a you know, the, the, a pretty cool look. Mm. And they just kind of yeah. Well, well, look, dude. He was never champion, right? He never held up those both those belts. That never did happen, right? I don't remember. I don't know what you're talking about. I never remember anything like yeah. that. Um, I don't remember being shocked in my room and just wondering what the fuck was going on with my life and thinking I was in an alternate reality. But, uh, yeah, we got February 19th. You got the uh, Sonata versus Tanahashi. That should be pretty good. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you're going to get your Naito Okada match. Uh, the uh, day after on the 20th and that should be fucking awesome so some st- should be awesome some stuff um, I and I think uh, Tanahashi will be able to carry Sonata to a good match yeah yeah well yeah it is Tanahashi dude that dude really don't but I would really like I mean I know we've kind of bashed Sonata here and there on this podcast another guy that appreciates my art and has featured it Aww. so I Good don't want to, I'm just, uh, you know, I appreciate that, but would really like to see him. Uh, it seems like whenever he gets one of these chances at having a big semi-main singles match or main event singles match, he hasn't always performed the way he should, so hopefully he does it this time It's with a coin toss, but it is um, Tanahashi, dude. Yeah, and we'll see a classic Okada Naito yeah. match, and... Um, I think, you know, of course, I really think we'll see Okada defend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But um, we'll, we'll go into more of that. We'll, maybe we'll do some more previews. Talk, when talk a little closer. more about that. But, and um, uh, But it, it still makes... Yeah, I don't think it necessarily means Naito is never going to be at the top again. But no. um, it could. It's exciting, knows. though. And then, like I said, uh, breaking news here, that Forbidden Door will be open on Wednesday. Well, hopefully he pays off on that, and it's actually cool. And it's not... I my instinct is Jay White, but you know we'll see. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. Jay White's sitting there and needs something to do, um, or it could be you know a Tanahashi coming over with the U.S. Title. In all honesty, we'll probably find out who it is before then, anyways. So, <laughs> yeah. So, we will. all right, guys. Well, we appreciate you listening. If you stayed all the way through the episode, I hope you learned a little something about stardom. And uh, we can't wait to be back with you guys real soon. So, um, yeah. Anything else, Justin? All right, that's all I got. Right. Have a good night, everybody. And, uh, well, good week or whatever when this shows up. And interact with us. We told you where to follow at the beginning of the show. Refer back to at ring, In Ring Art and uh, Wrestling and Podcast. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> wrestling and Pod on Instagram. Exactly. So, all right, you guys. Well, we will uh, talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.